Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now cooling your PC is one of the most important parts of system building. Having run an overclocked G3258 for a couple of years on the stock cooler, I know how annoying noise can get, especially when it's coming from your CPU fan. Now to combat this you can spend loads of money on a huge heat sink with massive fans that are guaranteed to keep your temperatures low, or you could do the exact opposite. This is an Arctic passive CPU cooler and it claims to be able to cool your CPU efficiently while using no fan whatsoever. Now this isn't usually the sort of thing I do here on this channel but having seen this product for the low low price of just £10, roughly 15 American dollars on Amazon, I just had to give it a try and see if it could efficiently cool one of my cheaper and lower wattage CPUs that I have in my collection. Who knows, if you're putting together an HTPC build and you're opting for something that's hopefully going to be silent, this may be the ideal product for you. So let's get into it, take a look at whether or not this thing is a suitable solution, talk about some of the limitations you may face with a cooler like this, and of course test it temperature-wise against Intel's stock offering. So the CPU I'm using today is the Celeron G460, a super cheap socket 1155 offering with a TDP of just 35 watts. That's an important factor to note because this heatsink is suitable for any Intel CPU rated at 47 watts or below. That doesn't mean you're limited to processors like this Celeron though. For example, Intel's i3, i5 and i7T series are all rated at 45 watts or less. It does mean though that if you want a little more room TDP wise, then it would be worth considering other more expensive passive coolers out there if a silent experience is what you're after. But today we're focusing on what is probably the cheapest no noise option. Installation is pretty simple, just take out the washers included in the package and stick them over the holes on the back of the motherboard. It's overall an easy process but quite fiddly at the same time. All you have to do after applying the washers is put the little springs on the screws and line them up with the holes on the bottom of the heatsink. Once you get the first one in, the heatsink should pretty much hold itself in place and let you relax a little while you try to line things up. Once it's on, I think it looks pretty good in a simplistic shiny silver sort of way. Of course a product can't just look good, it has to do a job as well. So with that, let's get into it. Let's take a look at the idle temps first of all, with both this and a stock cooler. The first thing I did was fire up Ada64 to stress test the CPU. As you can see at idle with the stock solution, the processor sat consistently at 35 degrees, and after running the test for two hours due to my own time limitations of course, the maximum recorded temperature was 50. The Arctic 11 passive on the other hand, which by the way comes pre-applied with MX2 thermal paste, fluctuated between 35 and 38 idle, averaging 37 with just this program open. Idle temps then with this cooler and CPU, not too much different. Low temps on the other hand, well, they weren't too different either at 54 degrees. This tells you mostly what you need to know, and that's that you will be sacrificing a few degrees with a CPU like this for a completely silent operation. But I think that's a worthy trade-off, considering that the processor is still operating within very reasonable temperatures. Of course, different processors will yield different results. I then got curious as to what sort of temperature difference we could expect in games, so I ran a couple of titles that the G460 could handle. In Call of Duty World at War, the CPU peaked at 50 degrees. Considering the max T-case temperature for this model is 65.5, that's a figure well within reasonable limits. Compared to the stock cooler, this passive solution ran 4 degrees hotter. Again, I feel a decent figure and successful compromise if you want to eliminate as much noise as possible from your planned or current low power build. In Far Cry 2, or the in-game benchmark anyway, it was a similar result with the processor peaking at 51 degrees on the fanless cooler, and a little cooler but a lot louder on the stock Intel setup. Bear in mind I did add a rear exhaust fan to the back of the case after filming, which was present during the test of both coolers. Overall, if you've got a low powered CPU that needs cooling as cheaply and as silently as possible, then this may be a perfect solution for you. I wouldn't recommend using a processor that features a higher TDP than this thing is built for at all, even if it is tempting because that could prove disastrous to your build. 
Something like this is perfect for a small media centre or gaming machine, though as I said there are also plenty of Core i-series chips that this would efficiently keep cool. And I'll actually be exploring that a little more when I put together a silent budget build using this thing very soon. As for this video, well I hope you've enjoyed it, it's been a little bit different, but if you liked it leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, let me know if you use one of these coolers and how well it's holding up for you, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.